Hi, this is Kirby Summers, and I welcome you to the Epstein Project podcast. Um, I want to thank you for your continued um, support through Twitter, the purchase of my books, becoming a member of my newsletter, and of course, becoming a patron on my Patreon. Uh, your support for the last two years, it'll be two years next month, has helped me stay on the Jeffrey Epstein case, which I think by the end of this um, podcast, you will see and know with certainty that Jeffrey Epstein was not a lone pedophile, as mainstream media would like you to believe, that in fact, he and his partner, Ghislaine Maxwell, and Leslie Wexner, and Jean-Luc Brunel, and many others were part of an ongoing international trafficking operation that utilized models, actresses, young girls like the girls that we have come to know through the Jeffrey Epstein case, uh, who basically came to our attention after Jeffrey Epstein's arrest in which really began in 2005 but he did not surrender to um, the authorities until uh, 2008 and as we all know this is the case where Alexandra Acosta said that he was told to back off because Jeffrey Epstein was above his pay grade and belonged to intelligence. Today I want to tell you about the story of Karen Mulder. Karen Mulder, um, you all may be familiar with her. She was one of the top um, models of the 1980s. She worked with um, all of the top models. Uh, she worked with, um, let's see, uh, she worked with Cindy Crawford, Kate Moss, Naomi Campbell, and I think many of you are familiar with Naomi's name as it pertains to uh, Virginia Giuffre having been on her yacht and having gone to her birthday party. And there is a famous photograph of Naomi looking at Virginia who was 17 at the time um, and taken to Paris. Uh, And this is the trip where it is alleged that Epstein and Maxwell uh, coerced Virginia to engage in in, uh, activity with Prince Andrew. Okay, so Karen Mulder, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. She, she, She has been brought to my attention and for many, in fact, for many years. Um, and I, and I have been aware of certain parts of her story for many years. Um, let me just say that Karen Mulder is, uh, now, um, 50, uh, 51. Her birthday was just, uh, three days ago. Uh, she, uh, was born in 1970. Uh, she began to model in um, Paris for the company Elite, which was founded by John Casablancas. Um, and she became uh, a model for Valentino, Yves Saint Laurent, Giorgio Armani, Guess. And in 1992, she became a model for Victoria's Secret. A lot of the information between Mulder and Victoria's Secret is being scrubbed from the internet. And again, by the time I am finished with this podcast, you will have a better understanding as to why uh, the information about Karen is being scrubbed from the internet. So um, Karen in 1991 uh, was on a French television show that had not, it it wasn't live. It was being pre-recorded. And um, she came out and said 
that various men at the elite modeling agency had raped her that Elite had used her and other models as sex slaves in a ring that extended through the top echelons of French society, implicating politicians, members, members of the police, and other top officials. She claimed that her own father had raped her at the age of two, that she had been sexually abused by a family friend, and that she had been um made to have sex with uh prince albert of monaco um the television show never aired the segment and in fact they destroyed the master tape what happened after this was that a member of her family, and she says uh, that it was her sister, appeared, uh, showed up in her apartment, and she was put into uh, a mental hospital where she was heavily sedated for five months and where she received treatment for what was called depression and anxiety. Gerald Marie, the head of Elite Paris, and one of the men who whom Mulder had accused of rape, paid for her hospital visit. Um, and But this happened after Marie was filmed on hidden camera by the BBC trying to give a 15-year-old model 300 lira for sex and bragging uh, about how many people were in the elite model competition where the average age was 15 and that he was going to sleep with her that year. Um, she is the first woman to actually have stepped forward uh, to talk about a high-end sex trafficking ring that included politicians, royalty, the police, and high members of society. Um, she also alleges that um, they had her take drugs, um, cocaine in her case, and that by turning her into a, a drug addict, essentially, uh, they can sort of count on her to stay quiet. Uh, and also when she um, came out of the hospital, uh, there was a suicide attempt. Well, the press, and by the press I mean mainstream media, for years has, has um, labeled Karen Mulder as somebody who is mentally unstable. They've even used the word insane. They have called her a liar. But she is none of those things. She, in fact, was telling the truth. So in 1992, in August, in Paris, Karen Mulder um, appeared in the Valentino spring and summer uh, fashion show. In the audience is Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh, I posted a photograph of that event on my Twitter page, so it's it's there on my Twitter if you want to go see it. At the show is Karen Mulder, and I also posted a photograph showing that it's the same show because they're all holding the same black and white um, modeling pamphlet that is handed out at fashion shows. Um, in 1992, she signs a contract to be to work for Leslie Wexner for Victoria's Secret. I have heard stories by having spoken to uh, victims 
of what they call a sex slave trafficking ring. And really women who have come to me throughout the, these last two years and said, I was five, I was six, I was seven, I was eight, I was nine, I was 12, I was 15. I, you know, and you know, they were, they've all basically told me the same story. I've had some people tell me they were at the after party uh, for this fashion show that um, was attended by Karen Mulder, Jeffrey Epstein, and Ghislaine Maxwell, allegedly. I was told that um, they were there when Karen was raped by Jeffrey Epstein that other girls were also raped by Jeffrey Epstein. Again, this is the same year after this incident is when Karen is signed by Victoria's Secret. And if you do not remember, it is Leslie Wexner who purchased many properties for Jeffrey Epstein. The mansion the largest townhouse in new york on the upper east side on 71st street the mansion next to it which now uh, the person who is living in it is a survivor of 9 11. he also purchased 301 east 66th street the apartment building that is theoretically owned by Jeffrey F. Epstein's brother uh, via his real estate company. That also came from Leslie Wexner. Um, many things came from Leslie Wexner. The 727 that later became known as the Lolita Express that has the rear uh, that can open while the plane is in air, which I said at some point last year, was because the bodies of the worn out girls were being disposed of by being dropped out of the airplane and which is the same aircraft the CIA used and in fact the same aircraft that um, was used by the head of the CIA when he disguised himself as uh, someone who hijacked a plane um, but I will go into that at a different time. Uh, they were just testing. He was testing it for its use. Um, and again, the head of the CIA, William Colby, in uh, an undercover operation, hijacked a 727 a very long time ago. I will cover that story in a different at a different time. Um, so after Karen Mulder becomes a, a model for Victoria's Secret, um, you know, she, she, ha she, she continues to try to talk about her story, but of course, everyone has tried to label her crazy. Um, say, and then even herself, she had to, after she, stepped forward to say that she was forced to sleep with Prince uh, Albert of Monaco. Uh, and she actually uh, filled out legal papers to accuse him of rape. She was forced, and, and this is heartbreaking for me, she was forced to publicly apologize to him. Um, there's an article that anybody can pull up where Prince Andrew was complaining that Prince Albert of Monaco can do anything. And by the way, Prince Albert of Monaco has been accused of rape before, but that uh, Prince Andrew, he cannot do anything. And so if you just put into any search, and I recommend uh, that you do never use Google, but use another search engine and, and just put in Prince Andrew, Prince Albert, 
can do anything. And up will pop the article where Prince Andrew is claiming that, oh my goodness, Prince Albert can do anything, but I cannot. Okay, so we do know that um, Virginia Giuffray, who was found by Ghislaine Maxwell at Mar-a-Lago in Florida, a property that belongs to Donald Trump, was uh, coerced to have sex with Prince Andrew, allegedly. Prince Andrew uh, appeared in a very interesting BBC interview where he pretty much said that, no, she's lying. Uh, however, it came across as very fake and Probably it was the biggest PR disaster uh, and, and, and the, biggest, um, the biggest faux pas uh, for, the, for, 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 for Buckingham Palace. Um, but it is clear that uh, these allegations from many different women, which, by the way, include the Harvey Weinstein accusers because what happens when there is an environment and there are powerful men who are part of it like Leslie Wexner, Ira Rickless, Leon Black, so on and so forth and they know that um, there is an international trafficking ring which exists for the purpose of blackmail they feel that any woman they want is available to them. That is why Harvey Weinstein behaved the way that he did and did what he did to Rose McGowan and to perhaps hundreds of other women throughout the course of many years. That includes Bill Cosby and the reason he did what he did. And by the way, Bill Cosby was a friend of Jeffrey Epstein. He used to live across the street from him. That is why someone like Woody Allen, who is also a friend of Jeffrey Epstein and who I said at some point, I believe close to two years ago, they met when Epstein was at Dalton and Woody Allen was. Um, doing research for a movie that he was working on, not perhaps coincidentally about having an older man in his 40s having an affair, if you want to call it an affair, but raping a teenage girl who was going to the school. That is why someone like Ira Rickless felt it was okay to um, find me at my most vulnerable push my life behind the scenes into becoming even more vulnerable and turn me into his sex slave of many years. Um, my story, if you're interested in knowing the life of a sex slave and the insidiousness of how it happens and what happens to you psychologically, and, you know, many women are killed there was an attempt on my life, and frankly, there was more than one attempt. There have been attempts on the lives of these women. Uh, Karen Mulder, that drug overdose where she attempted to commit suicide. I no longer believe she attempted to commit suicide. I think that, you know, somebody attempted to suicide her and failed. Um, and I believe that's the case with a lot of these model suicides, banker suicides, the suicide, let's say, of Danny Casolaro, the suicide, let's say, of Gary Webb. You know, there have been a lot of suicides that I don't believe are suicides. Interestingly enough, also Robert Maxwell fits into that category, although Robert Maxwell is a Leslie Wexner, is a Jeffrey Epstein, is an Ira Rickless, is a Leon Black. Is, is is a Bill Gates. Bill Gates is another one who is part of this 
allegedly of this international trafficking ring that expands more than one intelligence agency. So I, um, I posted a lot of this stuff on Twitter uh, yesterday and continued to do it today. Uh, what they try to do, and by they I mean the people who run this trafficking ring, which includes the politicians, the intelligence agencies, the royals of different countries, they're all part of it. Uh, they control the police, which explains why when I was being, um, when, when somebody was breaking into my apartment and I called the police two times, I called 911 two times for them to come and help me, they did not come. They did not come. That is why when Maria Farmer, you know, when she was in Ohio and she was sexually assaulted by Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, and she contacted the sheriff's office in Ohio two times, they did not come. In fact, they told her, we work for, for Wexner. The sheriff is outside the gates of the property. They were not going to help her. That is why Karen Mulder, in her 1991 attempt to tell the world, said that the police were involved. Yes, the police are involved because they need access to the police. Um, because at the local level, that is where trafficking is, um, that's where it's delegated to the federal government for reasons that are becoming much clearer every day, does not have a trafficking uh, compartment or division. They have no way to combat human trafficking. Why? Because they don't want to, because they are part of this allegedly. I'm gonna keep using the word allegedly because I, you know, <laughs> I am talking to you about something that has been a secret an ongoing cover-up for a very long time. So again, Jeffrey Epstein is not a lone pedo pedophile. Uh, he has operated as a conduit for moving um, vulnerable young girls, literally girls, and in some cases children, uh, through this pipeline of sexual slavery. Uh, it was my understanding when I was doing my research for Bonnie's Clyde, the true story of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, which I uh, published last year, that he was providing girls to Nexium, and no one else has connected, connected that dot. Um, it is the reason why we have seen allegations made uh, in the Jeffrey Epstein case against people like former President Bill Clinton, former President Donald Trump, former President, um, well, all, you know, the Bush family. There have been allegations even before uh, the younger Bush, even before George Bush. I mean, his father was also uh, alleged to have had sex slaves. This it, this is also connected, obviously, to uh, the trafficking ring that Craig Spence was part of, the call boy ring uh, during the Ronald Reagan White House that is connected to the Franklin scandal. That is, con I mean, it, it's all the same thing. It has just it's got different tentacles. There are different people who control it, but definitely the modeling industry, the acting industry, and even just regular people, um, like many of the girls who were entrapped in Epstein's operation, who he found in poor areas of Florida were lured into this trap because really they never want you to speak. And once you do speak, 
they will label you as a liar, as an extortionist. This is what we're seeing with Leon Black. He has called the woman who he turned into his sex slave, who is now suing him, he preemptively contacted the, quote, authorities and labeled her a, an extortionist. Um, Alan Dershowitz has labeled Virginia Giuffre as an extortionist. If we remember the Franklin scandal, two of the victims were threatened with jail and Alicia Owens was put in jail for a number of years. She spent the first two years of a very long sentence in solitary confinement. They put her in jail after she talked about being sexually trafficked and drugged by powerful politicians and powerful people. They put her in jail for lying. She wasn't lying. She was telling the truth and she refused to recant. So they threw her in jail. Um, Alan Dershowitz, if you look at his tweets, there's a tweet that where he, he makes this uh, statement that Virginia Giuffre is going to end up in jail for perjury. So basically for the same reason that Alicia Owens ended up in jail for perjury. Well, the, that is why these people, part of the blackmail operation is to make sure that they have judges who are on their side, who will rule in their favor to make sure they have a president such as Bill Clinton, okay? To make sure that they have certain people in positions of power, even in the medical field. There have been allegations made by some of Jeffrey Epstein's victims, more than just Virginia, by the way, claiming that Eva Dubin's medical certificate was purchased, claiming that Epstein purchased many other medical certificates. So that Karen Mulder, for example, in 2011, she picks up the phone. She has just had um, plastic surgery. Uh, in the modeling world and for someone who is accustomed to being beautiful, plastic surgery has been part of everybody's life for decades and decades. She was unhappy with the result. She calls her plastic surgeon, who by the way, interestingly enough, is a woman. Her name is not mentioned in any of the reports, but she is a woman. And she lives in Paris, and she is a plastic surgeon in Paris. Karen Mulder is upset. She, she, she is, you know, if you're upset because somebody has botched your plastic surgery, you're going to speak to the doctor, and you're going to raise your voice, and you're going to tell that doctor off. And that is what Karen Mulder did. And before she knew it, there were police at her door arresting her for threatening to kill. I mean, I, I, you know, this is a very bizarre thing. I, the only other time that I have heard of somebody threatening to arrest you for making a phone call happened to me. When my um, nephew, who was like my brother, was uh, paralyzed after his stroke, and he was I was taking care of him at the time, not too long ago. Uh, he was at Mount Sinai, which is, again, connected to the Epstein gang, connected to Ira Rickless, connected to Carl Icahn, connected to Michael Milken, connected to Leon Black. And um, I was, after they had my nephew in the hospital, I was not allowed to, to visit my nephew. I was not allowed to take my nephew out, even though I 
was his power of attorney and I was his medical proxy. I So I was legally the person responsible for his care. He lived in my home. They took him from my house. The police came and took him from my house, my apartment, and put him into, med into Mount Sinai, where then I was not allowed to go see him. Uh, I received a phone call from a man with a very threatening voice telling me that I was considered a threat to national security and that if they ever saw my face at Mount Sinai uh, to try to visit my nephew, that they were going to arrest me uh, as a terrorist. I have never told this to in a public way, although my friends at the time were stunned to hear something like this. But this sounds very similar to what happened to Karen Mulder when she called her, her plastic surgeon and the police showed up to arrest her. Interesting how her arrest made the news. Who would have tipped off the news so that they could further humiliate and discredit Karen Mulder? These people, right? The people who run this trafficking ring. Okay, well, I'm going to leave this here, but I am very curious to hear your thoughts on this. Again, I've got tweets up on my Twitter where I discuss this. I think it's time for the world to know that this has been going on before Epstein. It's going on today. It's going on in, in multiple countries. And um, again, Epstein is not a lone pedophile. All of these documentaries that are coming out, all of these books, all of the stories that mainstream media puts out there, that is the narrative that they want you to believe. That is not the truth. The truth is that this is much larger than that, has gone on much longer. And in order for you to stay safe, because anybody can be a victim. Anybody can be a victim of a predator. In order for you to stay safe, you just have to understand that a predator will come into your life, will encourage you to tell that person about your troubles, will make you feel important by, because this person will be more powerful than you, will have more money than you, will, will tell you that they are in a position to help you uh, make your problems disappear. They, they, they start off like that. They, they, they make you feel this way. And then slowly they take over your life. And before you know it, you are doing something that you did not expect to do. And, and you are caught in something that then becomes a psychological trap. So do not fall for people who come into your life and say to you, oh, I can take care of your problems. I can make you know if, if you are going to do something, do it on your own. Okay. And, and, uh, be, be, uh, careful with people who come to you with promises and catch you, especially when you are in a vulnerable position because we're, we can all be fooled. Okay. But you can be careful. All right. Well, Please remember to like the video. Please leave your comments and your thoughts about this. Uh, this is an important topic and we can't stop talking about it. Okay, have a good day. Again, this is Kirby Summers for the Epstein Project Podcast. Bye.